talk uh, represents a collaboration between Gordon College, Weber State University, and Ohio, uh, Ohio Wesleyan University. And speaker uh, is Joy Kimmel uh, from Gordon College. She's been working uh, <clears throat> under the direction of um, Craig Jackson here at Ohio Wesleyan in the summer. And the title of her talk is Conceptual Paleoclimate Modeling. Of the four bulge, 
But as soon as the equilibrium line shifts upward, melts a little bit, it can push over the four volts where having kicks in, it becomes destabilizing, and the ice sheet wastes away. And this is what we are expecting and see now in the West Antarctic ice sheet. That leaves a footprint of this bowl depression. And this is a picture of Canada and the uplifting rates of how the underlying bedrock is uh, coming back after the Laurentide ice sheet, which was on Canada during the late Pleistocene era, the last ice age. So here's the blue, the four bolt is relaxing, and the red is the most depressed part is now coming up at uh, these rates down here. So what is an ice sheet life cycle? So just as I mentioned, it starts with a slow glaciation uh, when the climate allows it to grow. We have, once it reaches water, it's able to stabilize, calve there, um, and is able to be in this position for thousands of years where the bedrock depresses under the weight of the ice load. And when the climate pushes it into an unstable state, destabilizing calving can occur where the rapid deglaciation occurs and that's when the ice sheet completely disappears or is pushed back into the accumulation zone. And then that's when we see bedrock uplift and that's where we see the footprint of the ice load in Canada. So our model. So our model is a coupled differential equation uh, system of differential equations where we look at both how the length of the ice sheet is changing with time and how the bedrock elevation is changing with time. And so how we decide to model the underlying bedrock? Well, we start with a constant slope here. This is sea level zero elevation, <coughs> and this is the sea. Then we can force an equilibrium line uh, with those insulation values that I mentioned earlier. And watch the glacier grow, and as it grows, it would become heavier, depressing the bed, and further depressing it below sea level, which is where you can get this four bulge, which uh, is not quite four bulge right now, we are looking to add it as four bulge right now, it's just a pivot point, which we can see this destabilizing having uh, occur. So our equations themselves, DLDT looks at the surface mass balance rate plus the calving, how much we're losing from the ocean. And psi deals with this underlying bedrock, how is the average slope changing with time. And DYDT is looking at how the elevation changes with time. So this is 250 elevation, this is zero elevation, and this is negative 60 elevation. So we look at how that changes. And we have model that with just a net force, how much force is the ice sheet exerting on the underlying bedrock and how much is the bedrock pushing back up. So what are our current results? Uh, so these, the, this blue line is our two-dimensional volume of our hypothetical ice sheet. And what you can see here, the important bit to note is that it, that we follow it back to present day. So this is uh, lots of ice here at a certain point Cabin kicks in this black spikes. This the our volume dies off extremely quickly, and that allows the bedrock to uplift. The things to note about this that aren't as accurate. This is the uh, isotope data that I mentioned earlier. So this is what we were trying to and are still trying to match. And there are many reasons why our model does not match this exactly with the hundred thousand year cycles as well as the slow glaciation, which both things we're looking to add in a four bulge to uh, help with the slow glaciation and decrease the amount of time for this uplift. So this uplift occurs extremely quickly, which spikes the ice sheet. And so that's why this slow glaciation does not occur. So those are the few things that we're looking to add in the fall. But thanks to Dr. Jackson and my partner, Kristen, who is going to have a poster in the poster session, and, and the NSF as well as the oh.
Joy, questions? Yes. So with the solar insulation, I mean, if I go above the atmosphere and hold, a, I look at a surface perpendicular to the incoming sunlight, I think it's about 1,380 watts per square meter. And those values are a lot less, I presume, because the sunlight's coming in at a slant. Yeah, these are, these are at uh, June, for June, 60 degrees north for the million years, so that's why they're, they're like that. And then the variations are due to the variations in the axial inclination, the shape of the orbit, the average radius. Yeah, so the more yeah. fish sites. Yes. Right, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I understand how bedrock can get depressed with the big ice sheets pushing it down. Yes. What makes it come back? So basically the the asthenosphere is so the the earth has the crust the and some hard mantle and then the asthenosphere underneath it, which is more viscous. And so it pushes down and so the weight is kind of maybe like pushing it down where the the four bulge is just the response to that that weight, but when that weight is removed, the equilibrium state is for the four bulge to relax and the asthenosphere to go back. It's very, it's very slow process. It takes thousands of years. Any other questions for Joy? And so, so you're looking at O18, is that because water that has O18 evaporates more readily than water that has, or less readily than water that has O16? In it? Yeah, so uh, what happens is when it's hotter outside, you have uh, more evaporation from the ocean of the delta 18. And so that is taken out of the ocean. So when it's warmer, you have less oxygen 18 concentration in the sea and more oxygen 18 concentration on the ice itself and then when it's colder you have more oxygen 18 so that's where the slow glaciation occurs so that's how we see back to five million years this cycle of 100,000 years actually changes as you go back um, more in time this has just been the case for the past 700,000 years the periods change any other questions? Okay, thank you, Joy.